Welcome into the Harvest Friends. I'm Abigail and I'm joined today by Lakeith and Andrew. And if you're new to this space, we want to use this time to help bring clarity and confidence that you might need to live and share your faith in everyday places of life. So that's what this space is all about. Hey guys. Hey Abigail. Yeah, the big three. We are all here. The big three. See, I I felt like we needed a name, so maybe yeah. that's what I need to start saying that we're the big three. I like it. All right, so we have a um, a cool topic to discuss today. We're going to be talking about thankfulness, which is probably really topical for this time of year. Next week is Thanksgiving, um, so we um, are going to be covering that today. But we do have a couple of announcements for you guys. Who are listening or watching first of all if you're watching us then you're watching us on youtube we now have a youtube channel and we will start um showing all of our podcasts i guess that's what we call it i don't even know um all of our shows this space whatever it may be we're going to be doing it on um on youtube but you can still listen to us on itunes and spotify and all the places where you listen to podcasts so Basically, we're just in every possible social media <laughs> outlet now. So, yeah. Anyway, so we are there. If you would like to see our faces, then check us out on YouTube. Subscribe so you'll know when the next episode is out. And also, subscribing is good for us. So, subscribe to all the things. <laughs> next, the other thing that we want to talk about yet again, and we promise we won't keep bugging you about this, but we have this thing called Speak Pipe. Um, it's in the show notes of this episode, and if you click on it, you can leave us a voicemail. So any questions that you might have, we would love to answer them. And 2020, one of our biggest goals is going to be that this space is a much more back and forth communication. So that means we need the back and forth. We need you. So if you have anything that we talked about today or in past episodes, and as you're listening or watching us and you think, man, I wish I could just ask them a question, guess what? You can. <laughs> so all you have to do is check out the link in the show notes or visit us at www.speakpipe.com slash into the harvest. Leave us a message, one or two minutes. Tell us who you are, where you're from. And then just get into it and we will, we would love to, love to hear from you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So guys, we are here today talking about thankfulness. Let's just kick it off with what are we thankful for? How are you guys doing? Let's hear, <laughs> let's hear some thankfulness. Yeah. We you- started off. Yeah. I'm, I'm really thankful. Um, so after the race, like I hurt my foot really bad, and then I got bronchitis actually. So I've I'm been out of the, the game for part. about. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm coming out of that season. That was like okay. a whole month of no activity, and mm-hmm. uh, was, the cough was brutal. So uh, I'm also thankful that uh, you know, being in ministry, we got to put out newsletters. I finally got my newsletters done. I uh, got all the pictures, so we just have to finalize that. And lastly, I'm thankful for uh, my wife Stephanie. She's been, she's been doing really good in small ways, and uh, yeah, she's she's got me with a happy heart. So, Keith's got the bronchitis. The bronchitis. I got bronchitis. <laughs> you Ain't nobody got did time for that. Our last episode together. If you were listening, oh, yeah. friends, then you probably heard Keith hacking along. Dude, I was trying not to cough the whole episode. It was so brutal. So brutal. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely been there. And it just kept building from there, I guess. But but yeah, I would say um, Cindy and I were able to visit with some friends on the East Coast this past week. And um, very, very thankful for that time. It was a great trip. Uh, one, we got to go together, which in the past our kids have been younger. And so Cindy's really been holding down the uh, the home fort in, in past years when I've gone on trips. So it was really... I was pretty thankful that she was able to join me on this trip, especially since we connected with a lot of men and women. And Cindy brings a perspective that I definitely don't have. Um, So I was glad she was able to be there with me. Also, that our 
teenage boys survived while we were gone. The house is still here. I don't know how healthy they ate. <laughs> she usually um, keeps them well fed, but they are still alive. So thankful for that. And we actually had a bit of an adventure getting back from the East Coast. There was a snowstorm, so flights were delayed, flights were canceled. We ended up getting out of Philadelphia a day later than we expected. Um, and then on the flight back, I managed to spill an entire cup of hot coffee in my lap. Oh. Um, but you know what? We kept a positive mindset. And even when I was... Um, <laughs> scalding myself in very delicate areas um <laughs> i was able to smile and laugh about it so Whew, that i'm takes, glad that <laughs> i'm glad so. we're talking about thankfulness today because the <laughs> lord helped me be thankful uh yeah, earlier this week wow. but what, what about Man. you abigail well it is this is quite the topic friends um because it was a little bit of a rough week and uh there was one point where I actually checked to see if it was a full moon, and it was. <laughs> so that was kind of validating. I don't even know if that's a real thing or not, but it was. It this really week. felt. Yeah. It felt like a full moon. So, so it was. Um, but actually, so this is my favorite time of year. This is November, which is my birthday month, um, and so I'm thankful all the time because uh, this mm. is my month. Uh, I don't know if you <laughs> felt that, if you felt that when it switched over from October to November, but whatever good feelings you're feeling, it was because it was the mm. month that Abigail was born. Anyway, <laughs> I love my birthday. I love talking about it and making sure everybody knows about it. It's on the 22nd, just in case you're listening. And it's before the 22nd. I can't remember when this comes out. Anyway, whatever the case, I'll take, I'll take late birthday. It's going to be, this, this comes out the day before your birthday. <gasps> Yep. So if you're listening to this and it's not yet my birthday, then just, you know, quickly, Amazon Prime is very fast. <laughs> oh, <wow>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, I love the holidays. I love gearing up for the holidays. So this is definitely prime thankful season. So great. Thanks for sharing your thankfulness. Um, I feel like maybe that wasn't our best thankful sharing because it was a lot of like, humble brags on thankfulness. But well, okay. we talked uh. we talked about this though, right? Because last time we did yeah. one on distractions and it was like super distracting the day of yeah. try, try, just trying to get the technology to work. And uh, so it does seem like anytime we have a themed topic for one of our shows, um, the Lord allows us to live it first before we, we talk about it. And so maybe that's, maybe that's some of what was going on this week. I don't, I don't really know. But it seems to work out that way. Oh yeah, it's very real. Like we had a episode. This episode is about thankfulness, and when we were starting off, man, everything was not going right, and uh, we had to maintain our Christ-like attitude and a, and a thankful heart. Because yeah, if not, this episode was going to be really hard. But we're here. We're thankful, and uh, yeah, God is God is still amazing. So yeah, yes, He is. <laughs> Okay. All right. We're going to try to stay on track. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm supposed to be guiding this conversation. So I'm going to try to do that. Okay. So team, we really need to maybe start off by explaining why thankfulness is important. Maybe give some examples from the Bible um, that help us kind of see why this isn't just, you know, a cursory like Thanksgiving episode or something. So, um, so maybe we get into how, where we see thankfulness in the Bible and why it's so important to us as believers. Uh, so maybe we can kick that off here. Yeah, for sure. So I know we were, we were all uh, thinking about our favorite passages on thankfulness from Scripture, and Abby's going to share hers in just a little bit, but it's a great one. Um, so... Of course, I couldn't pick that one because she she called dibs on it. Fine. But, Do you want me to go first? I've, no, 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 my, no, no. I've got my backup. I'm, my little person, <laughs> my little no. person was like popping his head in, so I was. Uh, oh yeah, no problem. Trying to. No I problem didn't want to like start talking and then be fully interrupted by my tiny person. <laughs> That's mm. okay. So I picked a, a passage out of Psalm 50, and I really like this one because it touches on what our thankfulness means 
not just to us, but but to God, and how it fits in with this whole idea of worship and offering a sacrifice. So in Psalm 50, I'm going to read verses 7 through 15 here. God is speaking, and he says, Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I do not reprove you for your sacrifices, and your burnt offerings are continually before me. So they were offering the the animal sacrifices that the law of Moses had required them to. And God was saying, well, I'm not, I'm not upset with you because of that, because you're doing a great job offering animals. But then he goes on to say, I shall take no young bull out of your house, nor male goats out of your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains and everything that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the world is mine and all it contains. Shall I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of male goats? And so God is just going out of his way to say, in a sense, you're not doing me a favor by offering these animals. This, this, these sacrifices that you're making, they're not for my sake. They were really designed for your sake. And there's nothing that we have to offer God that, that he doesn't already possess. No, no physical object or animal. So he goes on to say in verse 14, Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will rescue you, and you will honor me. And so I like it because it really highlights that that when we offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to God, we're really giving him something that is unique. It's in our power to, to give him in a way that, you know, if you if you give money or you give these physical objects, those aren't things that God can't already get from some other source. But a thankful heart and expressing that in, in a sacrifice of uh, thanksgiving is something that he values and he's looking for. So we can be doing all of the other religious things, you know, on the on the money, and yet that's what they seemed to be doing at that time. But there was something at the beginning, again, it says that uh, I will testify against you. So God was, they were doing the religious stuff, but what they did not have was this sacrifice of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And um, that was what was going to bring God honor. So it's one of my favorite reminders from scripture of the importance of, of thanksgiving. That's a really good one, Andrew. And see, that was, that was just as good as the one I have, which I did call dibs on. So I'll <laughs> share it. Um, I called dibs on the obvious one. I'm sure all of you listening are thinking it's the same one, but the story of the 10 lepers in Luke chapter 17, um, the story probably you all know goes that the, uh, these 10 lepers are um, calling out to Jesus for healing. And so um, he tells them to go wash and go see uh, the people in the temple, the priests, and as they start heading off, they notice that they're healed, like before they even get there. And only one of the ten um, stops and comes back, and you know, kind of kneels before the Lord and um, before Jesus, and um, and actually says thank you. And he says, "Who really? There were ten of you, and <laughs> the only one that came back was a Samaritan, which." You probably also know that the Samaritans were kind of foreigners um, to the Jewish people. They were not considered, you know, legit. And so Jesus then says, you know, your faith has made you well. Um, but he really calls out the fact that even though this guy is a foreigner, he's not a Jew, um, the fact that he was thankful, the fact that he came back and offered thanksgiving to the Lord um, kind of gave him a lot more credibility. So it kind of fits in really well with what you were saying, Andrew, in the sense that, you know, we can follow the rules, you know, so to speak, um, and kind of go through the motions, but without that actual spirit of Thanksgiving, um, we're, we're really missing a vital aspect of our faith. So Keith, do you yeah. have any thoughts? What have, what have you come up with? Um, I'm excited to hear what you got. I know you guys brought it. We can't be the big three if I don't bring it, you know. And uh, man, but I will say, I thought that was unique that Andrew chose a verse from the Old Testament out of Psalm, and then you chose one from 
the gospel is specifically from Luke, and I actually got one from the New Testament. So uh, the big three in the Bible are covered <laughs> too. So <laughs> I'm actually going to go out of <laughs> First Thessalonians, and Paul was encouraging the believers. And uh, I think these verses are as practical as they come. But it's verses 16 and 17, and it starts off by saying, Rejoice always. So even as we were having uh, technical difficulties and Andrew and Cindy flying and it's going mad. Uh, rejoicing always is key. Like you can you can choose to have uh, a good attitude towards circumstances. And if Cindy was here, she would always say, uh, "Have an attitude of gratitude," you know. And I think that's true. But the verse goes on to say, "Pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus." And it's rare that the Bible goes out of its way to say, "Hey, this is the will of God." But right here, it actually says that, you know, giving thanks and everything is the will of God for your life. So I, uh, I think that was good, team. Those are those are all good, good encouragements on Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Um, in fact, I wanted to share one last quote um, for you guys. Um, in one of our Harvesters articles that we did a, probably a month or two ago, and it's the one titled, um, and everyone has heard the good news. So if you want to go back to that Harvester's article and read the whole thing, it's really crazy. Mm. This one guy and his team shared the gospel with everyone in their city of like over 20,000 people. Um, so it's a very cool um, interview. But something that he said um, when we asked him the question, you know, what's something that's hard about what you're doing in the harvest And he talked about just discouragement and, you know, some days it's raining or it's cold or you're just not feeling it. (laughs) Um, And so he said, actually, that I would often, so this is the quote I'm quoting him now. I would often force myself to give thanks and praise God on the way there and on the way back from sharing the gospel. And it changed my outlook and my attitude and my ability to love people. A sacrifice of praise is an antidote to discouragement and weariness. And I just thought that was really good um, and really fitting for what we're talking about. And I think that's really the key um, as we kind of go into, you know, why we think this is important. I think we've laid the foundation, biblically speaking, but I think just practically as believers, this is so key, what he said of just that it is truly the antidote um, for discouragement and weariness. So isn't that the best quote? <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. I mean, I, I think it's it's so true too that motivations for becoming a thankful person, I'm, I mean, I think most people would like to be thankful, but sometimes we buy into this idea that, well, if things were going better, then I would be thankful, as if thankfulness is something that is outside of our control or it's determined by our external circumstances or our situation in life at at any given moment. But like Keith was saying, um, we're supposed to rejoice always that God's purpose for us is to be thankful people, not just to have moments of thankfulness, but to, to learn how to become thankful people. And and that's something that um, this gentleman said in his quote was he would force himself Mm -hmm. going and coming to, be thankful and to express that. So motivations for thankfulness really threefold. One is it's important to God, which is kind of the anchor. God actually wants us and calls us to be thankful people, people that do have gratitude and that express that. Uh, secondly, it's it's who we're called to be as people, um, and it's in it's in our control. And third, it is what it does to us. It actually changes and. You could say selfishly, it improves your quality of life, that thankful people are just happier people. So the more you can learn how to become a thankful person, the better your own journey in life is going to be. And so uh, yeah, I see that in his quote as well, that, it, that he, and I think he was quoting a psalm there where he talks about a sacrifice of praise is an antidote. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. So also, it's a double quote. Yes. <laughs> I'm quoting someone <laughs> who's quoting them. <laughs> Nothing wrong with um, that. But absolutely the truth. And I think what you said is so good in this as a reminder that this is something in our control, that this isn't just our circumstances coming at us and we're just at the mercy of whether it's good or bad, that we can have this attitude of thankfulness, whether you know we've had a great 
day or a day that was kind of like the full moon. So <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So as we move forward, let's um, maybe go into more practical ways that we have found to help us be maybe more thankful, um, maybe adding thankfulness into our ministry, into our day-to-day -day, um, personal relationship with Jesus, kind of what that looks like. Yeah, I, um, oh man, I, I gotta admit, I am a Bears fan and uh, it'll be stretched to say why we're talking about football right now, but I think uh, our attitudes can be contagious and, uh, I think you can see that in the Seattle game, uh, just to set the stage a little bit. The Seahawks have been playing really well this year, but so have the San Francisco 49ers. They were undefeated, and uh, man, it was a back-and-forth game. And uh, Russell Wilson is pretty outspoken about his faith and being a believer and following the Lord, you know, on a big stage. And so he goes out, and this guy throws an interception at like the worst possible time. Yeah. Like there's oh, yeah. there's not a whole lot of time left in the game and he throws an interception and immediately he runs to the sideline and you see him, uh, you know, pumping up the guys like, hey, it's okay. Like, let's go. Let's get back in the fight. Let's go. And, uh, the circumstances looked like they were going to lose after that and partly it was his fault, but his attitude was contagious and I think uh, he had a thankful heart after throwing the interception and possibly throwing the game away. But if you watch it, of course, they come back. But I think it started there. It started with him choosing to have uh, a good attitude and a thankful attitude towards a bad circumstance. And uh, it ended up um, turning out the way it was supposed to. So I'm not a 49ers or a Seahawks fan, but I, I did notice that. And I admired his, his, uh, his heart towards that. That was the best sports story I've <laughs> ever heard. That was great. <laughs> So I've actually got a better one. Oh man, watch out! Well, I don't know if oh I do or not, God. but it's hilarious because I was to get something really girly to share. After I was, this. Go ahead. I was also going to talk about uh, a sports analogy. Are you actually, kidding? It's That's not me. even a sports Go analogy. Welcome so, to the end of the Harvest Sports Show. So there's a Go guy ahead. named Nick Foles who is the quarterback for the Jaguars. He he became famous because a few years ago he won the Super Bowl, and I'm pretty sure he was the MVP. Yep. But a very outspoken uh, outspoken Christian. And um, I think God used him to to lead a mini revival among the Philadelphia Eagles a few years back. So, it, I mean, it made news. It was really interesting. But he wasn't the franchise quarterback. He was only playing in that Super Bowl because the lead quarterback had been injured. And, and so he got this opportunity, and it was kind of this magical run where he went all the way to winning the championship. Um, I don't know if it was the next year or two years later, they ended up trading him because they couldn't afford both these quarterbacks. Yeah, so he goes to the Jaguars this year and he actually gets injured. So this year he started off and very early in the season, he's knocked out and now there's a young quarterback who's playing instead of him. And earlier this week, he was in a, in a um, meeting with the press and they asked him about this and they actually brought up his faith. They said, you know, you're a person of faith, but did you ever wonder why God would let this happen? Why God would let you get injured? And he spent about a minute and a half just giving praise to God and communicating how he was thankful. And, and he did not, he didn't see his injury as, as something um, random or accidental or that was outside of God's control, but that God had allowed this situation to happen and his thankfulness, his faith weren't rooted on his circumstances, whether he got injured or not. If God allowed him to get injured, it was because there was some lesson that he was teaching him or that he was do something he was doing with the team. And the, the people who were hearing this uh, in the comments, you know, there were some of them who were actually offended by this, offended by this idea that someone would be foolish enough to be thankful or to have the the mindset that God allowed this to happen and that there was good that could come out of it. And so it struck me that thankfulness is, is one of the most powerful, uh, thankfulness in the midst of difficulty is one of the most powerful witnesses of our faith, that we are people who see beyond this life, who see beyond the uh, immediate circumstances that surround us. So when people see us going through challenges and yet having a, a thankful attitude, 
a positive mindset, a mindset and still seeing God's hand at work in it, um, it actually creates this curiosity and maybe even this offense that people will take offense at it. So it's, it's just a sign to me of how, how powerful um, thankfulness is and, and how much it draws people's attention sometimes, many times in a good way, but sometimes even as a, in a negative response, like how could you be, how could you believe in God who allowed, mm -hmm. you know, your husband or your wife to, to die in that tragic accident? Like how, how could you be thankful? Um, and yet that's, that's the power of faith and, and our understanding that, that there is more going on in this life than, than what we would immediately think due to circumstances. Yeah, I think that there really is so much um, beauty in being able to take the time to to ask the Lord, especially when we can't see the reason for a hardship or the reason for whatever, whatever maybe we've been praying for that we haven't seen the answer for, or just all the things that can often keep us from being thankful um, and taking the time to really seek him and ask him, you know, what can I be thankful for in this waiting or in this hardship? Um, I don't have a sports story though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do okay. have a really I have a good one though. Um, and it's also kind of a famous one, but you guys just, just go with me on my famous stories today. <laughs> and I've got all the, the ones everyone probably already knows, but they're really good reminders. Um, this one is from Corey Tin Boone, who is a pretty famous, um, survivor of the Holocaust. She and her sister Betsy were um, in concentration camp together and her sister ended up um, dying there, but she survived and she went on to write um, a lot of famous books and she was a pretty famous speaker. Her book, The Hiding Place is still one of my all time favorite books of all time. Um, but one of the stories about her and her sister is that they were reading the first Thessalonians verse about being thankful all the time. And Betsy was like, yeah, I know. It's good. We were, it was like we we're all of our minds were seen. Um, <laughs> and uh, she is kind of she kind of paints her picture herself negatively in all of her stories, which I really doubt. But in the story, she, her sister Betsy is like, yes, we can do this. And Betsy um, and Corey says, look. I will be thankful most of the time, but you cannot make me thankful for the fleas that we've got in this concentration camp. Like they were just being just constantly hounded by this itching and the, these crawling fleas just covering everything. I mean, I don't think we can even comprehend it. Um, and she was um, probably like the rest of us and was like, there's no way I can be thankful for these fleas. But as the week continued and Betsy persisted and was like, no, we can be thankful for anything and we're going to be th thankful for the fleas. Um, as the week persisted and um, she was doing some knitting and one of the guards they needed the guard for something and the guard refused to enter the room because of the fleas. And so all of a sudden Corey realized that God was using the fleas to keep them from having the guards constant, um, you know, over oversight. So they were able to have Bible studies and have worship time with other inmates um, without the guards just breathing down their neck because of the fleas. So I, I love that story because it's in the worst possible circumstances. And um, so far in my life, there has never been anything close to um, Holocaust levels and or close to a flea infestation. There was the time that everyone got lice. And we got a stomach bug at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I do remember thinking, like, this is pretty bad. <laughs> but even in that, um, I remember, like, being able to laugh about it. Because I think that if we have um, even a circumstance like Corey, where she thought, there's no way I can be thankful for fleas. If we seek the Lord and we ask him, he'll show mm -hmm. us something. He'll show us a way that he can use it to either refine our hearts, which I know I need a ton of refining. So usually that's the go-to answer for me is, well, I probably just needed some refining. <laughs> so, um, so I think we can always just have assurance that even if it's hard for us, we can seek him and he will help us to be, to be more thankful. Um, so guys, uh, what are some ways that maybe helpful tips that you found that help you 
to be more thankful? Like, do you have any daily routines to try to help you be thankful? Anything like that, that kind of we can give advice to our listeners? So, so one of mine is to spend time in prayer and during that time of prayer to, to really make sure that I dedicate a portion of that time to thanking God and acknowledging him. I also uh, oftentimes go on prayer walks outdoors because there's something about being outside for me that enables me to have more perspective. If I'm, if I'm in a man-made um, place, I don't know. It's just there, there's something about getting outside and seeing the, the, the scale of creation, the beauty of creation. It actually helps me be more thankful to have a, a, a better spirit of gratitude. And then if I'm consciously praying through and cataloging the things that I'm grateful for, whether they're relationships, um, whether they're circumstances, ways that I see God's hand at work in my life, um, I start there and, and that enables me to move towards some of the more difficult things that I might be facing, some of the things that I'm, um, that I don't see the perspective on, because I think that's, you know, so, so your story about Corey Ten Boom, she had that week between her sister yeah. challenging her and her getting a light bulb insight into, oh, that's, that's why we can be thankful for the fleas. And so sometimes we're in that in between period. We're, we're in that week that, that Corey Ten Boom was in where she, she sees the thing that she doesn't like that as she wishes wasn't true, but she doesn't yet see the benefit of it. And honestly, I think that there are some things in life that we're never going to see the benefit of. And mm -hmm. so to be, to be thankful for those things requires that we see all the other areas of life where God is demonstrating his goodness and his, his kindness towards us. And then we make a calculated gamble or we make a decision that we can trust God, that even if we don't understand how to be thankful or why we should be thankful about this circumstance that we're going through, um, we see that we can trust God's character and that it's not accidental. Um, and it's an act of faith to be thankful for those circumstances that we don't yet see the benefit of or, or how, it, how it all comes together. But for me, being outside, praying, and starting with the things that do make sense to me, where I do see God's goodness, but then continuing into the areas where I'm stretched and challenged um, really helps me have that perspective. So that's, that's a tip that has helped me. Yeah, that's solid, Andrew. And uh, Abby, I actually had never heard that story. So I appreciate you sharing it because that was the first time for me hearing that. Um, but thinking of quotes, um, I don't, me personally, I haven't come up with too many quotes. I just, that's not my gifting. But one that I think that God really brought to me, and it has been uh, a cool reminder, uh, it's, the quote goes, <clears throat> I'm thankful for any circumstance good or bad, that forces me to pray. Uh, I don't know how it came together, but I think God has uh, shown me how good that can be. So when things go astray or when something happened, I, uh, at some point the light bulb comes on. It's like, man, God, you're forcing me to pray. You know, like whether it's his goodness and I'm just overwhelmed by what he's doing in my life, uh, where I just have to say thank you. Like, God, that's, there's no hmm. way this could happen if it wasn't for you. Um, or if it's something really bad, like a uh, quick, you know, Flashback to about six months ago, uh, the Strouds had given us a really, you know, generous gift to help us go on our honeymoon and, and get married. And me and Steph had paid for all expense pass to uh, to Mexico, and we were all pumped about going. <laughs> but long story short, we could not go. And uh, finding that out real time the day of was extremely hard, you know, especially because my wife was so <laughs> pumped up about the trip. But uh, literally the day of at the, the airport, at the airport. <laughs> and uh, man, the, the people weren't nice about it. But uh, guess what? God was forcing me to pray, you know, and now being able to look back on that situation uh, when I'm talking to the people, because we're still dealing with the situation, trying to get some of the money back, which we haven't gotten any back. Pray for us, guys. But I'm able to talk to the representative Gosh. and tell them why I'm able to have a, a I, I, hopefully a godly perspective on the situation because 
God was forcing us to pray and to seek him. And who knows what he was protecting us from. So, uh, yeah, going back to that quote, I'm thankful for any circumstance, good or bad, that forces me to pray. Yeah. And, you know, you know, Andrew, you mentioned that there will be things that we don't ever know why they're here or why, mm-hmm. you know, they're not even for our good. We do live in a fallen world. So right. <laughs> um, there's, right. we're, we're going to face hard things. Um, I, I know that the times that my husband and I have faced the most heartbreak and I, I can, I can see how God has used that. Um, either to help encourage other people in their own heartbreak or just um, further cementing our faith, which is really important. I mean, when you can be completely heartbroken and still, you know, say you're still good, God, you know, those are really, Mm. those are like moments. Those are little guideposts of our lives that I think really solidify and cement our faith. And so it's really important and good to have that. Um, But sometimes, sometimes things are just, not great. And so ha- being able to be um, with a praising mind, even in that, is just, I think, takes practice. Um, I, I just, when thinking about practical advice I could give in this portion, the only things I could think of were like my mom things that I do. So this is about to get cheesy. But um, I, we, this time of year, we have a thankful tree. So I have this like um, wire tree and I get little, um, paper leaves every year and we put them on the thankful tree but the I leave them on all year so we put them on in November but the thankful leaves are there all the time so we can be remember what we were thankful for so sometimes we need to remember (laughs) and remember the good things that God has done already because I can be very um uh, quick to forget <laughs> maybe what I was thankful for yesterday. Um, I'm just have moved on to new stuff today and I'm not very thankful. Um, so that is, is a good reminder for me, uh, to continue to be thankful for the, the good gifts that the Lord has given. Um, and then the other one is just the fact that in our church every week we do highs and lows. Um, everyone kind of goes around and shares like highs and lows from their, from their week. And that has, oddly enough, really <laughs> helped me because I've had to think about, well, what were the right. highs of this week? And so that's helped me just think back. And if it's hard to think of something that I'm like, well, I wonder why. And it's always interesting as well when doing a high and low. I find as we go around the room that everyone tends to like start or they'll be sharing about their low. And then it's almost like they're like talking themselves out of it. Have you ever noticed this? Like, they're like, well, I was really sick, but then they'll, they'll say, but man, you know, my wife, she made this amazing chicken soup. Like, it's like they, like when we're doing it together, we just naturally tend to be like to find the silver lining because we don't want to be like the dead of the group. (laughs) (laughs) boy, she's a real downer. Um, and not to say there are times when we're really struggling and we need to share that and not have a silver lining. I mean, that is, has its place, but there's something about just intentionally sharing those highs and those lows that I feel like thankfulness kind of just comes forth from that. So adding that element either, um, we'll often do it, um, at the dinner table, just our family as well, where we'll share the highs and lows of the days. And so that's a little bit more present for our kids because, they never remember like one day to the next. <laughs> so, um, but that helps us as well because sometimes I don't remember yesterday because today's laundry really just wipes out all of yesterday. So um, I think those have been really helpful to me just to kind of be present and to try to have a positive attitude even mm-hmm. when things are rough. And this week I actually cried on Instagram stories over <laughs> pillowcases Um, so if you're not following me on Instagram, like you're really missing out on some like real classic Abigail moments. I just had to like go ahead and confess it here on this podcast because there are an into the harvest people that follow me (laughs) on social media. (laughs) And so just know I'm not a hypocrite. Like I did find the silver lining about this full of cases. It's a long story, but it was rough and everyone got to live with it, live it with me. I try to be very real with (laughs) I missed it. I missed it. This is news. I know. Well, it's okay. It's it's a tragic it's a tragic story about pillowcases. It's <laughs> almost in line with the Holocaust, but not quite. 
<laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that's not. I'm, strike me down. Ooh, sorry about that loud noise. <laughs> um, okay, guys. I think we have come to the end of this episode on thankfulness. We hope that it helped you. I, if anything, maybe just give you that space to think about your own life. Um, find the areas that you can be thankful for. Maybe just give the areas that you're struggling in to the Lord and ask him to help you to have that thankful heart, that sacrifice of praise. Um, Hmm. And we hope that this blesses you today. So don't forget, like us on all of our social media, subscribe, um, leave us a voicemail. (laughs) There's so many ways. But guys, thanks for this great conversation. It's always a blast. All right, Abby, thanks. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.